Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ty Jones, your error nerd, and today we're gonna to be talking about the VG diagram. Now, by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to look at the VG diagram and understand it, and I'm gonna show you the simplest way to understand what the VG diagram is, why we use it, what its purpose is for, and guess what? We're gonna build one up from scratch together. Coming right up. It's gonna be four four seven and change two thousand Okay, so here we go from scratch. Now, what do we need in order to get a VG diagram from scratch? So, first of all, what is the VG diagram? What does it stand for? If you look in the P hack, you're gonna see uh, on the on the Y axis, you're gonna see load factor, and on the X axis, you're gonna see airspeed. Now, airspeed is ex exactly what, what you see here is velocity, and load factor is actually the Gs. So if you have your velocity, and your G's, you get your V, G, V, G diagram. So that's where the VG diagram comes from. So what do we need uh, in order to start the VG diagram from scratch? Well, first we need to know what kind of aircraft we're gonna be flying today. Today we're gonna be flying those Cessna 172. You're gonna need three things from that 172. The, the stall speed, the normal operating speed, and the never exceed speed. So I put that right up here for us today. So we got our, our stall speed of 48, our, our normal operating speed of 129, and we have our never exceed speed of 163. Next, what we can do is we can uh, get our uh, our weight uh, class. For, so are we gonna be in normal or are we gonna be in utility? Uh, for today's purposes, I went ahead and uh, chose the utility. Now, why is that important? Because we need to know how many Gs we can pull um, the, depending on the weight uh, uh, category that we're in. So in this case, we're utility. So I have utility. The max you, we can pull in a utility uh, weight class is 4.4 positive Gs and negative 1.76 Gs. If we exceed that, then obviously we can expect some kind of uh, structural uh, uh, integrity um, failure. And this next one is kind of complicated. This is probably the most complicated part of the VG diagram. We have to understand that lift is proportional to the square of the velocity. So for example, if you have an aircraft traveling at let's say 200 knots, um, the lift has four times is, 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 uh, is more lift as an aircraft traveling at 100 knots. So how do we kind of like reverse this? Well, we take the square root of one times the uh, times the stall speed, then, then the square root of two times the stall speed, the square root of three times the stall speed, and then we just keep on going. And what we end up is we have little marks on here that we're actually going to create the VG diagram. Now I've already did this calculation be um, ahead of time for us to make this easier. And I kind of routed off the numbers so you have your uh, your G's, right? We have our G's over here. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I didn't go uh, past five because of our um, of our limit, right? Our utility category. There's no point of going on six because we can't go past four point four G's anyway. So what's the point? Uh, so the square root of one times the stall speed is forty eight. Uh, the square root of 2 times 48 is 60, I think that's like 67 point whatever, but these are rounded off numbers, they're not exact, uh, but I just did this for uh, simplicity. So let's go ahead and plot down um, our, our, uh, our plots, our, our speeds on our VG diagram. Okay, so what I did ahead of time, as you can see, you have these uh, little lines that are extended up a little bit on the x-axis, and then you got some more over here on the, on the, uh, on the y-axis. Now what are those? So if you see load factor, I got a I got a line coming right over here, and it's and it's uh, it's extended. Why? I have the negative 1.76, and that's where that's supposed to be, right? Uh, so that's 1.76. So if I try to draw a line, and I try to draw it as close as possible, as even as possible. Okay. So if our aircraft is in this range, we're going to expect some kind of uh, some in, some structural failure, right? Um, all right, and now over here, 163. That's our airspeed, right? That's our VNE. So I'm gonna draw a line from VNE, go all the way up here, straight up as I can, and that's our VNE airspeed. Now, with the uh, the top range, right? We have our 4.4. So let me go ahead and scoot over here. 
All right, so now we got our 4.4 positive Gs. So I'm going to make a line from 4.4 and I'm gonna try this, try to keep this as straight as possible. All right, now what I'm gonna do is the easiest part. Uh, we have the most difficult part already done for us. We did the math. You know, the square root of one G times the stall, square root of two Gs uh, with a stall. We got all these numbers here. So we're gonna plug these numbers in into our VG diagram and what do we get? So, uh, square root of one G at 48. So here's 48, one G. I'm gonna try to do this best I can. So one G. 48 and it's going to be right here. So there's my first mark right there. Moving on next two. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this both positive and negative. So 48, 48. So negative one, one, 48. Do the same thing over here and right about there. Right. So I got a mark there and a mark here. Actually, that's that's. There we go. Cool. Next two. What is for two G's? 68. So we're going to two. 68, so 68 is like, I don't know, there's 70, so 68 is like maybe like right there, I guess. Two Gs, 68 is right there, I guess. And we're gonna do the same thing down here for the negatives. Um, actually, let me let me use red for my uh, negatives here. There we go. All right, so 68 and negative two, let's see. Uh, let's say it's right there, right? All right, so there's, and that's it. We're already past the limit. So that's, there's no need to continue on with the negative anymore. So let's continue on with the positive. So we got three, 83. So we got three, we go over until we hit 83, which is like maybe right here. Let's see, three, 83, which is let's say right here, I guess. Cool. Next, four, 96. Four, go 90, let's see, 96 is like maybe in here somewhere. So let's say 96 right there. And then finally, uh, we want, since we can go past 4.4, we can go past four. So let's go ahead and get five. So that's why we went ahead and went five, the square root of five times the stall speed of 48, we got 107. So five is gonna be up here. And let's go 107, which is like right here, right? All right, so now we got our points already done. Okay, what's next? Now, all we have to do is connect the dots. I mean, that's literally it. Um, so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from zero. We're gonna connect the dots, and as you see in a regular VG diagram, right, you're going to start from zero at zero Gs, and you're gonna make this line all the way down, just connect the dots, and Okay, cool. Like I said, it stops right there, so we actually don't even need to go past this part, okay? Now, we're gonna go to the positive side. Positive Gs, again, connect the dots. Starting from zero, and we're going to connect the dots, uh, connect them, connect them, connect them, connect them, connect them. All right, ah, does this starting to look familiar? <laughs> hey, now we're cooking with Crisco. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is applying what we've learned from the from the pictures, all the, all the pictures that we've seen in the P-Hack, right? So we have our lift right here. We have absolutely no lift because we're not going fast enough to have, once we have one G, we need enough lift to get airborne, right? And that does not start until we reach this speed right here. So this right here is going to be your normal stall speed stall speed okay now um, now that's if you're just going 1g you can actually still stall by going 2g's or 3g's now this is what we demonstrate for commercial pilots out there uh, for the commercial pilots this is where you get your accelerated stall okay so if you're pulling 3g's um, at let's say 70 knots or whatever then you can actually stall the aircraft so this right here this line is your accelerated stall stall line so if you go outside of that then hey the aircraft's going to stall this right here and i'll probably make another video of this um uh, and, and another video about this but this is your va speed this is your uh maneuvering speed well like i said i'll go into another video 
um, but uh, like Bold Method and there's some other videos that really explain this really, really good, probably way better than I can, but anyway. Um, so that's gonna be your VA. And of course, that's gonna change with weight. Like for example, um, if, you, if you have a heavier aircraft, um, your stall speed is actually gonna be a little bit, a little bit more, right? Because you're heavier. So you actually need to fly a little bit faster, uh, otherwise you're gonna, you're gonna stall. So your stall speed would increase. So what happens is this line, your stall speed will be in, instead of here at 1G, it'll be over here. And then at, at 2Gs, your stall speed is gonna be over here and over here and over here and over here. So what's gonna happen, this whole line is gonna extend to the right, right? So what happens is this right here, now your VA speed is higher because you're heavier. Um, again, there's some other videos that explain this a lot more in depth. Um, if you want me to make a video on, on VA, just let me know, I'll, I'll post it. But um, just, just like I said, Bold Method, they have a really good video on it and all that good stuff. But anyway, moving on. So we have our uh, first uh, our first arc here. This is, like I said, this right here is the most difficult part. All you gotta do is connect the dots and then bam, there you have your curves, both positive and negative Gs. Uh, one thing we did not do is we did not add the um, the normal operating speed. So let's draw a line straight up. Here's our normal operating speed. And this right here is the yellow arc, right? So here's literally the green arc on your airspeed indicator. This right here is the uh, yellow arc. So you can't really be in this unless you have, you know, unless you're in smooth air. Now, once you're past v &E, this is gonna be your, uh, where your structural damage is. You never ever wanna exceed this, uh, this, this part, right? Um, and then there's another part up here, I think right up here, it, it depends on the aircraft, but you're gonna have a, a structural damage part, and then you're gonna have a uh, structural failure uh, part. So the failure, uh, the difference between the two is structural damage, you're gonna be damaging your aircraft, like, let's say, I don't know, uh, I don't know, maybe your flaps over speed or whatever, that's where you're gonna have this kind of damage. Now, structural failure, is that's where you get like, I don't know, wings will start falling off or, or whatnot. Uh, I don't think you'll ever get to that speed in a Cessna. But anyway, uh, so just so you understand, this is the VG diagram. It's very, very simple. Another thing I wanted to point out real quick is, so this is 1G, right? This is where we're normally at when we're flying, right? This line right here. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, this is what I get from trying to do this standing up. Anyway, the camera's like in my way, so I can't really stand in front of it. Anyway, um, so this is where we're normally at, right? So stall speed at 1G is 48. Our VNO is gonna be uh, 129. VNE, 163. Um, so this is where we normally stay at. Um, and this is literally it, that is the VG diagram. So that is literally the VG diagram in a nutshell. Hopefully now that you're looking at this, it does not look like uh, hieroglyphics anymore. I mean, you can actually look at this and understand what you're actually seeing. And on top of that, you can actually start one from scratch. And next time you look at your airspeed indicator, you can understand this a lot better now and where we get this green arcs from and these yellow arcs and these never exceed speeds. What happens when this little needle goes past 163, you can expect some structural failure. Um, so that is it in a nutshell. I hope you understand a lot more. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And I'd like to everybody to remember to keep flying, keep learning, and always have a fun. I'll see you guys next time.